Hello everybody, it is me, Sci-Fi. We're back with Top Pack Culture the first time in, I think, about a month. I'm here with my co-host, Dark. Hello, hello. And our brand new co-host and close friend, Jim the Fuzz. Hello there. <laughs> Alright, so today we're gonna, well, first I have to invite you guys in, and then we're gonna talk about whatever the hell we want. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Star. Whichever topic comes to mind, if you will. Well, I had a thought of the very first one. The newest update. What do we think of it as a whole? Best update. Best update? Really? What makes you say that? Come. Oh, come. <laughs> I, I was about to say, you have Anchor been... Companions. I'll put it like this, Doc, you're usually obsessed with your shots, huffing them like crazy, but Kome? That's just on a whole new level, man. I get to play with dice? Oh my god. <laughs> mm -hmm. Also, Crescent Bumper Pile are being good now, it's also a plus. I've heard that it was pretty good from you, I haven't gotten around to testing it yet, though. Yeah, I just love the Crescent, like my Crescent's looks, so I just wanted it to be good. Uh, that's fair. Just content wise, this update is massive. It's like really uh, usually one is able to get around to testing most of the stuff in what a day's time, mm -hmm. day or two. Yeah. This here, yeah, I foresee me not even being done by the end of this weekend here. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Like I'm still yeah. finding new shit in the update. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Like, I've just been playing with the uh, different companions, trying to see which ones can you put Contagion Bombs. I think what's mm -hmm. most, so been most interesting... The best. Yeah, like, what's been most interesting to me is just how interesting the Bond mods are now, with the um, new companion melees. Yeah, and the different stances, making them actually control... Like, I like how I can now see them, like, hovel an enemy down to the ground and, like, execute them. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so what mission do you guys want today? Isn't it alchemy? No, sir, uh, no al there is an alchemy. Alchemy Fisher? Ooh, yeah. yes. Alright, let me do, um, let's do just us, so invite only. Alchemy. Ooh, Kina Prime. That's the other thing, though, that I think is most interesting with this update. The galvanized mods might be my favorite part next to the companion changes themselves. Yeah, have you gotten around to Caliban testing? I have a little bit. He is very, very good now with the changes. Yeah. Oh, the squad got this Oh, that's weird. Yeah, Dark could kick shoot you him. out. Just shoot me in when you're in. <laughs> there you are. Let me back in. What I find most interesting about Caliban is not only just how his kit flows together more seamlessly now, like, he's very clearly now, like, a summoner frame with abilities designed around buffing his squad, as far as I can tell. Like, his boys. Yeah, like, he is, but also can be not. Like, um, like I feel like there's three different playstyles, and all of them are heavy strength required. Oh yeah. Which is either you use the Ortholisks as the guns to just shoot down people when the armor strip and the vulnerability with this two and breach surge with this one. Because let's be honest, you're not using the first ability. Oh um, no, dude, the first ability is great. You get energy back when you use it too. And it yeah, you have to hit like status. four enemies and more. Like, it's kinda That's pretty easy. It's really easy. Because he spreads to Tau with everything he does, so it doesn't really matter. I I find I cannot play with us one personally, but hey, you do you. Because <laughs> yeah, research is such a powerful tool, and then you can use the Ortholisks, the uh, melees, to then just kill with his fourth ability, uh, yeah, with a lot of damage <laughs> spreading. Like I've been playing 400% power strength Caleb, and it's a lot of fun. And then there's me being as limbo exclusive as it gets. <laughs> I mean, you gotta keep up that highest play rate between the two of us. <laughs> More or less. <laughs> I think he could break, take a break for over a year and he would still have the most usage out of all of us. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Caliban's in an awesome spot, I would say. Like, I'm very happy. Although I will admit one yeah. thing, he still doesn't have any fucking augments yet. Yeah. Like, other frames, like Varun, I believe, got released way later and now has, like, two... Yeah, well, why they've got an excuse for a uh, 
at an augment now. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. He, I, I mean, he doesn't technically need one, but I want one just to experiment with it now that I actually like his kit a lot more. Yeah, but the recent augments have just been, oh, let's add bonuses. Like, it's a mod slot that's just pure upgrade. Yeah. So, so then the question becomes, do you need that upgrade or do you not need it to over other mods? I want to see an actual augment. Like, you know when we discussed um, for the Limbo video, right? Like, one for his four that can make it so it doesn't shrink or something? Yeah, or like augments from like the first Ascendance augments where they fully change abilities like entirely in some cases. I will say though, I really like the Higasa right now. Yeah, he, the, the Higasa is quite decent, especially when you get the Onion for it for extra damage. I've been doing just fine without it, so long as I get the galvanized stacks up first. Yeah. It ends up having the issue that most uh, weapons tend to have nowadays, where it's like... Just get the stacks up and then you're fine, but getting those stacks could be unclean. That's fair. I will say though, cool. now that we have the companions and everything, what has been your favorite companion to experiment with? Well, Crescent. <laughs> well, I know you've said that, but are there any others? Yeah. Uh, the Vasca has been a lot of fun to try out. Uh, I've been trying a bunch with that. Which one is that again? You did mention a little bit about the... Um, like, I've seen some funny bugs from the Helmet Charger. Oh yeah, they, yeah. Patched, they patched a bunch of those, sadly. But it's still pretty good. Like, um, what was going on with it, apparently? Is that... Um, it, would I, the, it would have the bugs from the same sets. And, um, I don't know the detail. Hmm? Um, I don't know the exact details, but you were basically able to hit the integer limit for health. Yeah. And when like, the um, second you would go into negative, you would instantly die. Yeah. Because like, um, what was going on basically is that um, the helmet charger would stack the health bonus, right? But it wouldn't reset per stack. Like it would keep. It would basically reset the oldest stack. Oh, I died. Oh, oh, thank you. And because of that, it could go infinitely. It got patched recently, where now it... Or, like, it still stacks. It just say it will reset the oldest stack after a time. Yeah, making it so it doesn't just uh, scale indefinitely. Yeah, which is sad. Because but... people would use the pathesis, and when you use the pathesis, get even more stacks, you end up with stupid amounts of stacks. Oh, yeah, because the, the larvae from that counts too, right? Yeah, the maggot there is like good. I've been mostly looking just to optimize my heroes so far. Just experimenting a little bit, see what fits the best. Was there anything so far I'm heroes? pretty happy with the um I'm pretty happy with the way that uh, it deals with Overguard. Like, it really just feels like that, um, that assassin companion that uh, Eurus was really meant to be to begin with, if you go by the description. <laughs> Pretty nice. Under pressure. Yeah, they really cooked the companions, so, Oh, they did. I think the one really? that I'm most interested in trying out, though, is the, um, the Su Supra, whatever it's called. The um, Orkin one, where it's like designed to hunt down priority targets. Oh, that one, yeah. yeah the like, Sunni, uh, specifically. I haven't, yeah. I haven't really been trying out the Kubros, mainly because they're Kubros. Uh, outside of the Magia, because the Magia has been really good. Like, I still don't see a reason for other Kubros to be used outside of the Magia. Because it's just that much stronger. Well, the thing is, is that it's good to have that utility. You don't always need damage. Yeah. It's just, we really do like damage in this game. I know. We definitely do. We do. As long as we have the damage, we don't really care about the rest. The rest will follow with it. 
the same Yeah, build. the thing with me is, is I like having damage, but I also like guaranteeing my survivability or using special tactics to take out enemies. Because if I just look at an enemy and it dies, I don't feel anything. If I do it in an interesting way, I feel something. Yeah. Yeah, you will like Hume. I don't know, like, I've looked at her kit a lot, and, like, I do like how it's CC focus and damage comes with the decrees, mostly, with the exception of a 1, like you were telling me, but I don't know. I still gotta get a hold of her, though, so things could change. Yeah, like, I've been using wall latches, I've been using slides, I've been using a bit too much of the parkour system that shouldn't be used. <laughs> this god of wall latches is such a poor boom mechanic. How so? It's just really annoying, it doesn't last that long, and it like makes you a sitting duck. One could argue that it, um... Like, the wall jumps that we have currently sort of fill the role that wall latches were supposed to fill. Did it? No, you kind of want to stay moving, you don't want to just sit on a wall. <laughs> yeah. Like, I think if you got a flat damage reduction of like 75% for being in the wall latch, maybe it could be useful, I think, yeah. Or like insane damage amp, maybe if you got like plus 100 damage just for being in the wall latch. That could mm -hmm. be neat. Either that or they would need something, you know, basically remove that god-awful mechanic where you um, lose contact with the wall. I can understand it for... You know, the aimed light? That's fair the enough. Wall latch duration. But for the wall latch duration, no. That thing would need to go. Yeah. Be better. From you know, there, you would be able to use it as a sort of a breather. So, say you have a parkour puzzle where you kind of need to climb a mountain or some shit like that. <laughs> Hang on to a moving object and wait until you get into a proper position to get further. Yeah. Just if they add an actual wall latch team frame, would be Loki has the passive for it. <laughs> I'm not really counting uh, it, not to say he's bad by any means, but like, I don't really count that. It's just a passive. At this point, honestly, we already... Like, that name for that frame is just gonna be Wally, hands down. <laughs> Come on, that's, a, that's too insulting, man. <laughs> It's insulting though. Could be a compliment. It's a good frame. I don't get why you guys have such hate boners for him. <laughs> it's just he doesn't do much in this world. He does. He absolutely does. Yeah, he shoots a gun. He di he disarms enemies that your allies are protected from range damage. Oh, Loki in this particular case. Like, Loki. Loki I you can don't have all that much against. Like, like if you want to disarm, you have a hound ability for it. That's just like well, massive. no one, not like, everyone runs hound star. They should. It's really good. <laughs> just because it's good doesn't mean people use it. I mean, why do you think almost no one plays Saren that much these days? Because they like the feel of other things. Yeah, but that's choosing the uh, more difficult paths. I say as I play Cole, and I'm just literally just choosing the more difficult path. Well, the, like, the thing is, is that people don't just choose something because it's the strongest thing, they choose it because of the feel of something, at least to me. Mm -hmm. The feel, what sort of fantasy is it, um, yeah. is it trying to sell you, so on and so forth. I mean, heck, the whole reason why I love Limbo is I love the concept of manipulating the battlefield as an interdimensional top hat guy. <laughs> Mm -hmm. We said I the name of the podcast. I said the name of the podcast. <laughs> oh god. Title drop. Hmm? What'd you say? Oh, you don't know that? Basically, in terms of movies and stuff, you know how they will basically have a um, have a character say the name of the movie somewhere. Oh, that. I, I just didn't hear what you said for a second. Okay, I, I get it. Now. Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. I said title drop. Title drop. Okay, that's what you said. Because I was like, what? wait, what did you say? <laughs> Fair enough. 
It's just, I have terrible ears at times. To be fair, there's also explosions and other sort of things going around. <laughs> yeah, I got the reload on uh, on dash, so I'm just pretty much spamming my planks all far. <laughs> Very nice. I love the crease. I love it. The decree system is very interesting. I would say. Mm -hmm. Pain to get enemies that are close by to kill them. Kind of makes you wonder though if if Komi's successful, which he probably is. I wonder if they're gonna start doing that with more frames. Like I don't know. I think the more you do decrease on other frames, the less unique Komi will be. And I think Komi is like major part of her scaling. And like the reason why she functions as a frame in like late game content is due to the decrease. Honestly, Maybe Dark, make all it you would that could be an issue. All you would need to do here, Dark, is that you would need to look at that historically. Like, um, whenever a frame has introduced a mechanic or a weapon, for that matter, it's only a matter of time until other frames get options to get that ability too. Yeah, like, I wouldn't have a problem with it if it makes sense for a uh, character, like, very much sense on the character. Because, uh, like, like, if we it get, will, like, it some... It have to make uh, sense, but, you know, case in point, the Hound example in Loki. Like, the disarm mechanic was pretty exclusive to him back in the day. Wasn't there a, a Kubro that also disarmed? Uh, uh yes, but you don't count, count, count that one. one. It was a single guy, and it was once, I believe, every 20 to 30 seconds. It's not worth mentioning. Yeah. It was more in reference to uh, the fact that we have seen other characters that they can do it, but like they tend to make sense. Like, uh, like the disarm was really bad. Yeah. It tends to need to be something that makes sense. But again, like even stuff like Overguard, if that was a frame exclusive thing, you're starting to see that ability get more and more widespread. It's just kind of, you know. I think Overguard was then was more like positioned to be like the replacement for things like Iron Skin and make it all like under one umbrella. Which I like. Like it standardizes it and makes it easier for people to understand the concept of the different frames. Yeah, but it also kind of so many it again kinda of gets rid of the uniqueness because Iron Skin was like it does get. Yeah, but it's the same. It's just now it's considered overguard. Mm -hmm. It didn't it lose any properties, and I don't think it gained any properties by being swapped over. Well, it technically did. Yeah. Well, hmm, I'm trying to think of that right now. Cause... No, I, I don't, don't think it did. Like, I status immunity it... there. So, and Rhino wasn't exactly immune. Yeah, knockdown immune anyway. I believe that might be one of the things he might have gotten, the knockdown immunity. Isn't that his passive? I'm pretty sure that is his no, passive. No, it's uh, yeah. on the ground, sure that that a shockwave passive. explosion that does a little bit of damage. Because hmm. I remember you didn't need Prime Sure Footed or anything with AoE weapons to uh, be immune to the uh, knockdowns. So maybe this just was a part of Iron Skin then. Like, I just think like standardizing systems are required, uh, or like the game becomes too hard to handle. I just think like the crease is such a system where I guess you could balance it by choosing what the crease to even give a frame max is to, right? Like keeping Komi special by giving her the exclusive right to say the double crit, double melee, and double status damage. Uh, mm -hmm. but, like, like we do have examples of frames that have quote unquote exclusive mechanics, i.e. Limbo for instance. Um, but beyond that, like, which frames do we have with exclusive mechanics that hasn't gotten shared? Tau. Well, yes, uh, but that one is all the brand that's, that's frame, man. new, though. And, oh, actually, what about Garuda's 4? The thing where every attack procs slash. Oh, no, wait, no, that's a decree. I forgot, they added that as a decree later on. Well, is it? Is Bleed a decree? There's, there's a decree I'm pretty sure that's the low. That that. It's also the low surge. Oh, yeah. The, oh, that's something of the low surge. Sorry. Low surge. I was thinking of some, one of those things. Yeah. 
Ooh, Revenant. Take that. We can yoink. <laughs> but yeah, like, I want to see... One mechanic I hope to see on other frames is the dice mechanic. That'll never happen. You never know, we could get the... Like, uh, a card-inspired character with dice and gambling. I get... I think yeah, Gambit or whatever. I don't know if I'm happy about the idea of more Gamba frames, though. So. Eh, I'm open to it. The game is R18, isn't it? So it would we'll be fine. <laughs> Oop, sci-fi is down. Um, I and used, he's um, back up. Yeah, I used, um, what's it called? The, um, last gasp. I'm now immune for, uh, my book says 90 seconds. I will admit, though, I am noticing a funny glitch with the, um, salute, with the, um, stealth from the dog ramp. Apparently, when you first enter stealth, you, you're you invisible, but you enter a T-pose state. <laughs> I have that all the time right now, yeah. It's, uh, it happened after the last hotfix, and god damn is it... Uh... It's goofy as shit. <laughs> It's goofy. Are they fixed to be doing that? Because he clearly had to have done something for the character model. <laughs> well, they definitely changed something in there. That's for certain. Um... In the words of Trivial, he is the kind of person to give you a glass of lemonade and then go giggle in the corner. <laughs> uh. That's a that's a quote I don't remember here. <laughs> it's in it's in one of his videos. <laughs> I remember it very yeah. distinctly. I don't even know what that would entail. Or what that means? I don't remember which episode it was, but I do know it was something involving a Warframe. Maybe the first Caliban review, I think. Yeah, or Lavos. Could be Lavos. Could be that. And apparently I can't use my heavy attack, right? Oh, there we go. And now I'm having issues with it again. That's the annoying thing with this controller. Like, if I play for more than like 20 minutes, it starts having problems for whatever reason. Huh. Something that looking at it came to, I guess. I'd I might. say that sounds like a pretty fundamental system to be broken there. Well, the thing is, if I use it on my console, like the PS5, right, it works just fine. But when I plug it into the PC, because it has its own unique USB that you plug it into, it starts having issues after a while, and I have no clue why. Have you tried It'll just be the, their way of compete, like anti-competitive behavior. <laughs> yes. We never knew. Or it could just be an issue with the USB plug as well. Oh my god, my controller! Here, one second, I got to disable this thing. Disable and re enable. On the subject of buck frame, indeed. Mm -hmm. God! Damn! Like, I spent about four hours here um, on the update day trying to get to the hunting stock. Turned out that was... Yeah, getting uncommon um, uncommon animals in Valus was quite the pain. Oh yeah, that was a bug on release, apparently. <laughs> yep. And I was apparently one of the first to report it. Oh really? Nice. Our asses. Doing your due diligence. As one shouldn't eat. God damn, it's uh. That was a lot of work. How many do you now have of that specific one though? Because <laughs> you now must have a bunch of everything. I have a whole bunch of the rarest. Because for some god knows what reason, the thing is bugged, so only the rarest will spawn when you do the conservation tracks. Man, now, that... does that mean you have, like, now permanently a time course? <laughs> like, do you have a thousand? Do you have five hundred? Oh, I stopped after about... I'm sitting about sixty of those right now. Oh, I thought... <laughs> 
I know a few others that are like 400 plus. Because they were also looking to make platinum mob of uh, selling the early posture mobs. Granted, it's very likely that they were running conservation tracks from the start with the pheromones. I was not. Yeah. Oh, I am sitting on at least about 300 common ones right now because I was going all over the valleys looking for uh, looking for spawns. Yeah, I was doing that with a carp, and like each time we did, it, we would always get the rarest one if we used the pheromones. Mhm. Mm what was very interesting in my observations actually was that it was only specific animals that were affected. Maybe um, just the new ones. I don't particularly recall their names now. I keep forgetting it. It's those fox-like creatures in the Valis. Oh, the red fox things? The white-haired yeah. whatever it is? Yeah, Verminx, there it is. Verminx, yeah, Verminx. That was the one, indeed. Um, like, those particular ones, they spawn in the field, and they even seem to be working as intended, you know. Like, common spawns, uncommon, and even the occasional rare. As the same thing with the case for the poppers as well. But any animal that spawns not in groups, but as single wandering about ones, they were, yeah, they were the ones to be bugged. Hmm. What if maybe that was intentional by the devs to make it harder for people to grind for those things? I would say that's where we get into um, conspiracy territory. I know, like, I know. wouldn't there It could be the opposite way, where like they wanted to have the rare ones be super rare, and then they're not being super rare. I'm just, I'm just bullshitting. Don't worry about it. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Mm. They're trying to trick us. <laughs> Tricksy little dibs. Those bastards are up to something. <laughs> mm hmm Well, they have been cooking, so clearly, clearly they were. Oh yeah. They cooked. Oh yeah, like they've cooked really hard. I'm really happy for it. <laughs> Recently, we've been getting like killer frames every like every last one. Mm -hmm. Except Dante, he ends up having yeah, oh, yeah, a big, really big amounts of issues. A hilarious amount of issues. Fuck Dante. Yeah. Could have just nerfed his force abilities generation of Overguard and then of the two to make it worth casting. And it well, well, I think, um, well, the line of sight definitely needed to say, but like if they just changed the Overguard shit in the two, it would be fine, I feel. Yeah, like force us to cast the two. Because right now you're not forced to cast the two at all. You cast it four times every two minutes. I'll get this one. Just saying. Yeah. In some levels, content you can get away with just doing it twice. There we go. Ah! Man, I'm really liking Last Gas. <laughs> yeah, I told you about it. Well, the thing is, is that it was really annoying before because they had a shitty amp, but now they actually have a good amp, it's great. <laughs> Yeah, like, it's honestly like the. Like, I'm just expecting it to happen, like, now where I don't revive people unless I know I'm, like, with low MMR players. Like, it would basically be MR12 for me to even consider reviving them nowadays. Nice. Because mm. I just forget completely, because I'm so used to just having people revive themselves. I won't say you have managed to convert me to Dark. Yeah, I get it! It's so much easier to fucking play with people who have it. <laughs> Who's I lock? Yes! Love like it's literally, it's literally the kind of thing where like it's easier if every p person in the community had it with a decent amp, the game would be so much less worrisome. When you see people die, you can just ignore it. And it's just so much nicer. I still like the idea of having other survivability methods that isn't just using the operator, but I gotta admit, it's really good. Yeah, but it's just less like obviously I always mod to not die, but like. If I do die, it's not at the end of the world. I don't have to worry about others like spending time to revive me. Just revive myself. And like in some missions types, it's really useful. Mainly the Deep Archimedia and stuff. Oh yeah, like in Deep Archimedia, if I'm not using... Um, I mean, I always bring my quick thinking tech with me. 
But I always make sure to pray to R and Jesus that we don't get the thing where you can't use operator. <laughs> oh yeah, I always just make sure that isn't the one I enable because I always like disable one. So just someone just boost. gave me a fire rate boost. Where did that come from? I hit a low uh... surge, I think. Oh, that's probably why, yeah. I need to grab that steel. Or it was, um, it could have, yeah, it has really low surge. Oh, no speaking way, but... of, um, like, I was running the Corinth in the, um, in that new Komei mission, the Cetus mm -hmm. defense thingy. Yeah. And there's a fire rate buff you can get in there, plus Warframe buffs from, well, your fellow players. Mm-hmm. That gets ridiculously fun with a shotgun like that. <laughs> like, it just goes full automatic. Duck, 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 Have you used the uh, Exegus? The Exegus. Um, that one's based upon reload speed, is it not? It is, but it also has some fire rate incorporated into it. Well, yeah, they. that was after they had to nerf the... Um, Arcane you also have the Aventus as well, which you get some buffs and uh, ammo maxes and stuff. Yeah. Or just the Grimoire with a buff. Like, I have had, uh, when I've been playing Komei a lot, like, I've gotten the decree for fire rate increase. You get, get like, up to 30%, I believe. I don't actually remember. Of continually stacking fire rate increase. So you can get some stupid fire rate for the Grimoire. <laughs> and just basically one-shot everything. Is it just like a, just an endless stream of balls? Just yeah, it ends up being a beam. <laughs> It'll lag your game as well. Oh my god. That sounds nuts, I wanna try that. Like, it takes a while to get that to, to that point, but you, the fact that you can is kinda of funny. Like, I did a three-hour cascade with her, and she feels oh. so much... Like, she's the first health tank to do level cap with ease, like, actual... Like, basically easier than... Like, about the same difficulty as Revenant. I want to just get up and running. Obviously, luck based on the tree, somehow quick, quick you can uh, get and to that. And you level. also have to be active with their kit, too. Get the challenges, yeah. Some of them are really a pain, like wall latch and cascade on some tile sets and areas of the tile set are actually impossible, so you're waiting for the next before you can scale again. Nice. But, like, yeah, I guess I have poor to at least fix the second ability. Uh, they do some nice changes there that I won't have any issues. What's the problem? Now that I think of it here, um, one of the things I did not like particularly much about this new update is the Cetus Defense mission itself. Oh yeah, I, know, I, just kind of blows. I hoped it would be I endless, or have a reason <laughs> to be steel path. There, oh yeah, there's thing. like no reason, because you get the same amount of the orbs or whatever it is. On you get three. five less. But like, again, you get to do it in like, some people did it in 30 seconds. Yeah. yeah it's just really annoying. And the worst part is, Jim, I don't know if you've tested it yet and seen this, the, uh, the fucking Oni boss can't be put in the rift. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense, like all bosses shouldn't be in the rift. I think like they should, general. at least smaller bosses like that one. He's meant to be the big bad boss, though. Like the Panthers and the Panthers, uh, like the Plains of Event. It's annoying as fuck. <laughs> it basically just takes Limbo and says, Yeah, okay, you don't function now at all. Yeah, yeah because you could easily have it be like if someone were to like accidentally rift him or someone doesn't know they're rifting. Well, I'm saying like, he shouldn't be affected by Surge, oh. but he should be able to be put in the bubble. Yeah. Like, it's the old Cataclysm immunity mostly that we're having problems with. Oh, and what's even funnier, as I found out, it's not just Cataclysm he's immune to, like, the Rift, he's immune to all abilities, apparently. He's immune to everything, yeah. 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 It's, um, they added it in... I'm pretty sure Mesa cannot target it either. Yeah. So, it's basically everything. Yeah. Um, so, hey, at least it's... At, at, least, it's, at least it's, like, no one could have fun with abilities against the thing at the very least. Why is the well, why is yes the and hell thing no. also bugged in Outlook? Yes and no. Banshee still affects it, as far as I've seen. No, um, no she's not supposed to. I've been far as I saw, I had a one shot on the Banshee. Um, yeah, that one squad with a Banshee, that seemed to work. 
Um, I'll though I would have to again. confirm you. I will say though, ability damage still works because I was damaging it with Cataclysm when I was just trying to pull it. So if the sonar thing works, mm -hmm. we can use the limb bomb on it. <laughs> yeah. What does work though, um, is stuff like Harrow, for instance. Indirect buffs. They, they work still. Some so enemies look the... hilarious, by the way. I don't know if you guys seen like a stance pop up of enemies. Oh, the uh -huh. green shit around them? Yeah. Like... I noticed that, but I think it might be the hound that I have that's doing that, you know, Kupro. Mm -hmm. If we could put it in the rift, then we could use the indirect, um, the indirectness of the enemies around to buff us up and then kill it like that, for instance. Yeah, like, I think that's why, like, most of the bosses aren't affected by Rift. Rift is due to the Rift part of being a bit too strong to give to bosses. Like, we have been that, over this That only applies if there's a bunch of trash mobs nearby to really take advantage of. Yeah, but, uh, like, most mob, like, boss, bosses we've seen recently have had bosses. Like, we have the Fragmented One being a good example. Uh, the Jackal being a decent example of this, and so on. We have had recent bosses that have trash mobs around them. Similar to like Borderlands of all, like, you know, a Borderlands place and stuff. Ooh, Baruch! More oh. ducats! More ducats and the Baruch Prime for me. <laughs> I have been so lazy with my Prime farming. Yeah, like, to be fair, I have all the primes. I just have... I've been farming so much plat through, like, ribbons or uh, other things that I just haven't bothered farming for other things. Because I'll just I use plat. So you're a loot goblin. <laughs> eh? Would I be considered a loot goblin? If I'm considered a loot goblin, sure, I'm a loot goblin. <laughs> 70 sliding, like, sliding kills, but not gonna do that. Hell yeah. Means I have to just cancel my ability. Just wait oh for my another. god, my character's T-posing again. <laughs> As I said, every single time Derpling goes ahead and cloaks me, yeah, T-pose we go. Apparently it only happens when I enter, an, and when I enter the rift. When I exit it, it's fine. Which is really, really funny. T-posing powers. Mm -hmm. T-posing powers activate. So what, I, I hope this is one of those bugs that'll get fixed relatively quickly. I don't know. Um, dude, they've forgotten about Limbo. <laughs> yeah, it's not Limbo exclusive. Like, this is going to affect Ivara mains everywhere, so... Oh, the amount of complaints well, you see that, that, but I'm an Ivara main that doesn't even use Prowl. The thing is, it does not matter. It's any type of invisibility. Yeah, I don't use Pro Carrot. Like, I'm getting the uh, Komei ability from my bar soon. Oh, the um, health one? The budget Mesmer yeah. skin? <laughs> yeah, because if you have a high enough amount of uh, strength, it's like giving you a lot of uh, sustainability with the health tank. Because you use energy tanking quite well. I don't know how good it'll be on Limbo though, uh, to be fair, but like, it might be decent. Yeah, I, wa I want to test it though, because the moment I heard that's how it worked, I'm like, oh, this could be really interesting. You need quite a lot of strength, you need over 200% for it to really, really work. Oh, that's, uh, that's easy to hit. Yeah, blind especially, rage. Especially if you use, um, what's it, it what's, uh, precision intensify. Yeah, or blind rage. Yeah. How fortunate the Cataclysm is indeed the subsume slot, yeah? <laughs> or banish, it depends on the kind of builds. If you use low duration, like lower dur your duration, then you could easily subsume over banish. Uh, if you keep duration yeah, high, then you, you need to subsume over the rock 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 rock. I would say it's a, if you go low range, it's banish or surge, depending on your preference. If it's higher range, then it's Cataclysm, usually. What is it that the Tau status does again? Increases it increases elemental status. damage vulnerability, I believe. Or they vulnerability. become vulnerable to other statuses. Yeah. Yeah, that's not Ah. Yeah. 
And that could be no, that is vulnerability. Yeah, so the it's... helmet is, uh, version is now just insane. Oh yeah. I'm gonna test that against the actually. I forgot about that. Like, this good CC tools are always helmets. We have so many good CC and helmets. They cannot buff CC because they, they just buff damage range for doing it. Did they remove the damage vulnerability from Caliban's no, lift ability? No, it has that Antal status now. Huh. Well then. Another rift multiplicative thing? Here we go. Yep, it, honestly, it might very well be one of the strongest subsumes now. <laughs> I heard some people say it was directional now though, like similar to Condemn. But that's yeah, just still... Man, that doesn't matter, it's so good. Yeah, because it's still just Condemn, but without shields you get damage instead. That's worth it. For many frames. Yeah, and it looks like a pretty wide range too, based on what we saw in the videos, so... Doesn't really matter. Oh, shoot! Thank you. You're welcome. I should title this, I die a lot. <laughs> <laughs> No, you just, uh, you redacted a lot. That would be I a better... redacted a lot. <laughs> oh, because of YouTube's stupid... No, it's just one. because it's funny that way. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you're right. I commit redacted a lot. <laughs> commit would be weird, because that would imply you're doing it on purpose. Oh, but, yeah, sure. That's clickbait. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> very so. Very much so. We can't be clickbaiting. This is you, goddammit, highest integrity possible. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna be blaming anyone here, though. It's just sci-fi getting squirreled. <laughs> TLDR distracted. Yeah. Oh, that's... Oh. oh, that's neat. He was just screaming, but he didn't leave the rift. Wait a minute. Leave a snake alive, I need to test something. <laughs> You need a test subject, dammit. <laughs> the, the fucker was just screaming and he wasn't leaving the rift. <laughs> the limbo guy needs to be rewritten. <laughs> if, if so, that's gonna piss me off so much because I spent two fucking months on that thing. <laughs> the just a minute. singular character, you need to rewrite this character. In okay, higher no, any of okay, no, he hasn't. Okay, he's still ripping me up. He was just surged, though, this guy, the uh, Necromech. I was like, wait, did they make the kit so that he could be put in the Rift 2? <laughs> Honestly, if they have intent to do Limbo changes, it would probably be within the next half a year, I think. They are kind of doing... It would doing be things. when the augment stuff happens. It would either be at the very end of this year, or like, could be about Tenocon time. I don't yeah. expect them to do anything until about Tenocon, yeah. Yeah, it's like they don't have a reason to change it. They don't have to change them right now until they do the augments as well, right? Yeah. Because if they don't do the augments at the same time, then people are going to be like, why do we still have these useless augments? That's fair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How the heck did you forget about Limbo in this? Well, honestly, what I think is what's funny, I I might be slightly wrong about this, but I remember this. I think one of Red's favorite frames is actually Limbo. One of who's favorite? Rips. Rips. Yeah, Rips. Because I know she plays him. Hmm. Alright, so we're coming up on 45 minutes. I've prime times recently. Ooh, nice, Okina. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just popping those relics. Yeah. So, um, we're at 44 minutes, so we should probably dip, sadly. <laughs> oh, Fair enough. Keep going. We could keep going and make this the longest episode yet. <laughs> or I think uh, on a fair point, the first episode. Doesn't Jim need sleep? Uh, I was about to say it's two a.m. and I really should not destroy my sleep schedule. Yeah. University. <laughs> yeah. Oh god, the fucking T pose again. Or more specifically, I'm gonna hate it because uni life. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, yeah, that could be an issue for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just with the way the invisibility is and the emote that I'm using, it looks so cursed on my screen. 
T post for dominance. <laughs> this is just so distracting. Anyway, walking into this mouth Yo, with an ampule. Yo, I did the most damage. Ain't got the most kills next to Jim. Hey, that's a first. Hell yeah. <laughs> I was busy reviving you. Couldn't get that many kills. Oh, be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me take a look. <laughs> we need to do the be picture. careful now, Dark, because consider this. He was down, which means he was not doing anything. <laughs> yeah, but I was also not doing anything. I was reviving him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, anyway, I think this uh, was a pretty good episode, guys, don't you think? Yeah. yeah. A lot of interesting yeah. topics we got around, honestly. Yeah. Probably have more for next time, though, because we didn't even get around to talking about um, Nova or anything yet, actually. Well, yeah. Like, we didn't even speak kind much of about Coleman. That's true. We we should. Well, we're probably saving it until next time. Yeah, we'll do so it next time. We'll do like a part one and part two. Yeah. I was about to say there is um, there's material in this pod or not in the podcast. There's material in this update for at least three episodes. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. If we fill it with as much limbo content as we did this one. <laughs> now we need to try and get cool kid in and do the uh, what the different. Oh, the tags. <laughs> We have to. <laughs> oh yeah, hundred percent. We will. We'll do that eventually. Yeah. That, that's too this, funny. Uh, that would be that would be hilarious. We have to do it before November. Oh yeah, hundred percent. We'll do it before November. Or we release it the first of November. It'd <laughs> <laughs> be like, oh no. <laughs> like, <laughs> then we would get the funny comments of like, oh, I failed to this. That would oh be hilarious. man, yeah. <laughs> Alright, well, anyway, this has been me, Sci-Fi. This has been a blast. That was in the podcast, damn. Yeah. Giving him all the future ideas. Alright, with that, we'll see everybody who's listening to this hopefully next episode, and we'll talk more about the Comey and the Five Fates update, and with that, I will see you, or rather, we will see you all later. Have a wonderful evening. You guys could say goodbye, too. <laughs> Well, Move. yeah. <laughs> nah, microphone's shy. Damn. Never mind the fact that we've just been talking for, what, 45 minutes?